Hi, this is Miles Marie, the soldier of Mary. I'm going to read through extracts from the article Medjugorje, don't mention the apparitions in the tablet magazine. Uh, maybe just listen to me and take my analysis rather than subscribing to this journal. Unless you really want to, give it a temporary subscription. Some of the uh, articles, a lot of the articles in this newspaper are not always faithful to the unchanging teaching of the Catholic Church. But this is an interesting article on Medjugorje, the past of Medjugorje, the present and the future, which is what uh, I'm interested in. Okay, Medjugorje, just southwest of Mostar in Bosnia-Herzegovina. It was a quiet town until in 1981, Our Lady made it, began the transformation into the most popular pilgrimage site in Europe after Lourdes and Fatima. On the 24th and 25th of June, six local children reported seeing apparitions of the Blessed Virgin. They described her as standing on a cloud with a crown of 12 stars and a curl of black curl showing from behind her veil. So the, the author of this article talks about how he went to Medjugorje and how he uh, is interviewing a man called Jur who was born when the apparitions were beginning and has grown up in the village. Now a town full of restaurants and five-story hotels. A lot has changed in the last 40 years. He says, 2020 was a tough year. One of the six seers, Miriana, who was 15 at the time of the alleged apparitions, is now married with two children living in Medjugorje, where her family owns a hotel, announced in March of that year that Our Lady had told her that the regular apparitions had come to an end. Coincided with lockdown. It seemed Our Lady had decided to observe social distancing. The pandemic, of course, it diminished the number of visitors, but pilgrims came back for the 40th anniversary celebrations. It was a really big year, a big uh, successful Maladfest in August. Pope Francis sent a message. It didn't mention the apparitions. Um, it seems like there have been, according to one count, 50,000 so-called messages from this uh, apparition. A Vatican Commission was set up in 2010. We know about that, the Ruini report, and the findings were inconclusive. It is reported that the investigation leads towards affirming the supernatural nature of the first eight visions in 1981, but serious doubts as to the authenticity of the visions after that. We remember that in 2013, Pope Francis made the right observation the Virgin is not the chief of a postal office who would send messages every day. She is a mother. It seems like now it basically seems to be left alone, seeing what the fruits are going to be, what's going to come of it in the future. And there have been good fruits, particularly the founding of Mary's Mills and the confessions that are being heard there. But there are serious divisions in the local church that the apparitions have brought to light, particularly with the Franciscans who were there long before the re-establishment of the hierarchy. And the local hierarchy has never accepted the truth of the apparitions, which has traditionally been a requirement for their authenticities. Some in the bishop's camp viewed Medjugorje as a little more than the Franciscan plot. One friar, Slavko Barbary, was suspended from priestly duties but continued active in Medjugorje until his death in 2000. We know about the next guy, friend, uh, Thomas Slav Lazic, was indicted of more serious misconduct, forcibly laicized, and when he refused to give up ministry, excommunicated in 2020. Um, Medjugorje boosted the morale of Bosnia's embattled Catholic minority. And now Croats take Medjugorje as a spiritual home and um, many involved in the charismatic renewal movement in the 1990s were attracted to Medjugorje where signs and wonders seem to happen every day. In 2019 the Pope allowed official pilgrimages to go to Medjugorje. There's lots of Poles, there's lots of Italians but also there are many Irish and Guinness on tap is available in some pubs and hotel, hotels. Here's an interesting part though. Over the years, the emphasis has shifted away from the apparitions to Medjugorje as a place of prayer. Although the author says that he found the hill very numinous. But he adds that in the parish church, the shift is towards the more usual mediums of grace, sacraments, personal and communal prayer, away from extraordinary 
phenomena, which the church has long said is never a good foundation for faith. Of course, there's lots of confessions, and priests often speak highly of that. The uh, Pope appointed an apostolic uh, vic visitor to the parish of Medjugorje, and that particular first one passed away. He wasn't involved with investigating the authenticity of the apparitions, just ensuring that pilgrimages took place uh, easily. Okay, so the author's wife is Croatian, and he says that it's going to be intriguing how the story unfolds. We've learned that the Pope can be impatient with Catholics whose devotional preferences have taken them to the margins of the church. The author says that he believes Our Lady is present at Medjugorje. Medjugorje still in inspires. It is calmer, more contemplative. The thrill of the regular daily bulletin from Mary has been replaced by the more quotidian means of grace. Prayer, adoration, community, sacrament. What happened here will probably always remain a mystery, but as it becomes a less excitable and more sober place, Medjugorje may become a more helpful symbol for the church as a whole. That is the article by Stephen Kilo Reynolds. I thought it was an interesting article because it's really emphasizing how probably the church is never going to rule on Medjugorje. We're never going to get an authentic no from the Vatican even though the local bishops have condemned it. And probably Medjugorje itself is going to less and less emphasize the apparitions, the so-called messages, and it's going to become a place of prayer, a place of peace, a place of uh, devotion. When I went to Medjugorje a couple of years ago, I could see that was taking place. You can't buy any pictures of the visionaries in shops. They're not emphasized that much, and some hardly have any messages anymore. They are hardly involved in the Medjugorje, Medjugorje phenomena anymore. It seems like the messages are becoming less important. I don't think we'll ever get all 10 secrets. I don't think that stuff with the invisible ink is ever going to happen. I think that's just going to get gradually shelved and we're going to be left with a place of prayer, adoration, community and sacrament. You know, that's probably a good thing. That's probably a good thing because the fruits of Medjugorje that I'm aware of are from prayer. They are from adoration, from the rosary. God is no snob. Our Lady isn't a snob either. When people pray the rosary and they go on a pilgrimage and they do penance, grace is a given. I think it's a good thing if Medjugorje fades away emphasis of the so-called apparitions and focuses on being a place of prayer, of penance, of pilgrimage. That's where the graces are coming from. May Almighty God bless you. May Our Lady intercede for you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.